Uh, let me show you a little bit uh, uh, some features of the center. So, first of all, uh, we have here, uh, we are located in a very special area of, the, area of the city, nearby the headquarters of the city of Rio. This makes it easier for us to function. This is a very modern building, and it was built really in a very short time. A time that it would shed, we could say, a record time. Uh, we began in August 2010. In August 2010, this was only landscape, there was nothing here, and we worked very hard to deliver this in only four months. Uh, to do that, uh, we had 200 professionals involved in the project. We had 400 workers working 24 hours a day to deliver our center at the beginning of our summer. We have here in this building more than 300,000 meters of cables. We have also 300 monitors spread throughout 100 rooms. We have also in this building, we are auto-sufficient in energy. We have absolutely high availability in, high, in telecommunications and total redundancy. And all of this makes this building the most intelligent building in our city and we are very proud for that. Uh, we have some features that we'd like to share with you. We are in the control room. This is the very room that we are at this moment. In front of us, we have the largest uh, big screen in Latin America. It's 80 square meters of screens. And our mayor would like to tell you that this screen is bigger than NASA's, which is only 60 square meters. And uh, we are very happy with that. And we have Samsung as our partner presenting the screens here, which is also a partner of the International Olympic Committee. Uh, we just, uh, Mr. President, we just left our crisis control room. There we have a telepresence technology to connect with the official resident of the mayor of Rio, to also with the palace of the governor of Rio. And with that, in that room, we can control all of the city in case of crisis. So all the directions, all the instructions are taken from there with all the information coming to us so that the mayor and the leaders of the city can make the fastest and the best decisions uh, for, the, for the future of the city. So let's move on. We have in this room uh, 70 controllers monitoring the city 24 hours, 7 days a week. And in total we will have 400 professionals involved in the day-by-day -day operations of our center. Uh, the executive management, I'd like to introduce to all of you, Savio. Franco is our COO, the Chief Operations Officer of the City of Rio, and I think for the IOC side, uh, come here, I think Mr. President, uh, he's a guy with games time experience, he was the General Manager of Maracanã during the Pan American Games, so he understands our business as well as major operations, so I think the City of Rio is in very good hands, and Sabio, good luck for your job. So, uh, continue on. Uh, as a summary, what we do here first is take care of the city of Rio on a day-by-day -day basis. We act in times of crisis and of course we coordinate the cities during major events. And of course we are preparing for the, last, the biggest challenge in our history, which will be the organization of Rio 2016 Olympic Games. And you can be sure, uh, Mr. President, Feliz, especially you, uh, Nawal, our chairwoman, that the city of Rio will be ready all of its operations will function and will have a modern, professional seat for you to play the games on it. So, let's uh, continue to show you a little bit how we work here. We have uh, three phases on every event or even in our day-by-day -day operations. We plan before, we do it during the events and after that we analyze. Let's show you the, the next screens, in the, next, in the next screen, uh, some of our capabilities. So, uh, we have a planning and preparation process on place. First of all, uh, we have all the technology to dynamically connect our teams, wherever they are, whenever they are. Uh, we can accelerate the development and implementation of any activities. We have protocols for all the situations in the city of Rio. We created already plans of actions to respond to incidents. We can collaborate and we continu continuously plan our events. During the operations uh, phase, we have uh, the capability to track and report all incidents in an automated fashion. We can visualize the situation. We have all the cameras of the city coming here, all the information from the utility companies, from the subway, from the metro, everything comes here. And this allows us to be more efficient in the managing of the city. And also, we have all our resources from the city uh, already in, uh, in the system, so we know which team is closer to which incident, and we can activate it very closely. Of course, we can collaborate, communicate, and monitor uh, while we operate. 
And after a certain uh, incident, we can manage costs, uh, we can generate performance reports so that the mayor can see which agency responded better, where he can actually manage it and make changes if necessary. We have the capability to analyze and most important of all, to use past experiences to update our plans of action. So this center, which is opening today, this is an ongoing process, this is very important for you to know. Uh, we are, the initial phase, we will be testing our systems, we will be upgrading so that on the way forward, we will gain full capability and response. So let's move on. Of course, all this is important that we have to communicate. We have to communicate with our citizens and we have to communicate with the press. So it will be available for us all the technology, newest technology tools to communicate through websites, Twitter, everything that is possible. And also we'll have uh, daily reports to the press three times a day, every day, seven days a week. We'll have the first report at 6 a.m. to get the, night, the, the morning news. Then we have a second report at 11 a.m. to have the midday news. And then at 6 p.m. for the nightly shows. Whenever an incident occurs, special editions of our bulletins will be uh, available to the press and also every small incident will be continuously communicated so that we can uh, uh, get this operation center to benefit our citizens in, its, in their day-by-day -day lives. So let's uh, move on. This concludes this part of the presentation and now we would like to present to you a simulation of the capabilities of the center. So I would like uh, to ask my operator to put uh, this is the power grid of the city of Rio. This shows that the city of Rio right now has no blackout, but we could simulate a blackout in a certain part of the Rio, let's say the Baja region. Uh, let's say that we have a blackout in Baja. It will show here in the screen uh, the blackout in Baja region. There you go. We could zoom in to see exactly where that hypothetical blackout is happening. So we zoom in. And then we could ask for our Secretary of Education which schools we have in that area. Public schools. So there you go, we have some public schools. Which hospitals are in that area? So those are the hospitals. And we could, we have one of the schools in a blackout area. Which school is that? We have the name of the principal, all the information. And from here we can communicate with the school, with instructions. We can send support teams there and help it uh, through this blackout period. Let's zoom out and show uh, you another feature. Now we'd like to uh, clear the board, please, uh, so that we can talk a little bit about transport. Uh, the transport simulation was done yesterday at peak time at rush hour. So these are some main roads in the city, of course, red means heavy traffic, green means free traffic, and uh, we could go to that particular area that you use uh, almost every day, going to the international airport called the uh, red line, so let's zoom in the red line and you'll see the capability that we have real time to check how it's each of the main roads of our city. So we click there and we put up a graphic what's going on there right now. So the green line is the ideal travel time. The light blue line is the average travel time in the last weeks and the dark blue is what is what happening right now. So you can see that we are hitting very heavy traffic in that area. That means that we had a big, a long weekend for the New Year's Eve, everybody exiting the city at the same time. And this is recorded because our cameras can record the plates of the vehicles in one point and then in another point, and we calculate the speed in each area. Let's go to the connection from the south to the north zone. We have a dual, uh, uh, a dual track there. One is green, which is the way from La Boa to the city center, you see we are in ideal conditions, right on the green, below average, nobody going out in that direction, and we can go to the other side, to the other direction, which is red, that means everybody going home, or leaving the city, or going to some direction, and we are with traffic at uh, uh, above average. And this, our operators here can send additional support, Transit, traffic operators can change the speed of the lights to reduce uh, this kind of situation in the city. So let's go now for another incident. Uh, let's go, let's try to clear the board. And uh, now we'd like to show you uh, uh, some, what we do. Well, let's do some public order. Let's see what kind of incidents we have in the city and how we are treating those incidents here. Let's, so let's put up some public order incidents in the city. So there we go. Let's go to the central area of the city near the Maracanã, for instance. 
there is the Maracanã. Let's see a particular incident over there, what, what, what was reported. So there we have a very, various vehicles parked on the sidewalk, impeding the pedestrian flow. So the operator could locate where are tow trucks, which is the uh, closest tow truck. All of the tow trucks are with GPS, and we can instruct the tow truck to go and to support and to solve that incident. Let's zoom out, and this is commercial of my department, Mr. Mayor. Let's see the garbage collection trucks in the city. So just only for the mayor to see that we are working the last day of the year. We see we are spread out throughout our city. And uh, this is uh, the regions of each department of our uh, garbage collection company. Let's go to the Governor Island nearby the airport and see what kind of resources we have there right now. So Mr. Mayor, we have 313 men working nearby the airport and we can, we can place them wherever we need if there is an incident, if they need to respond to something, we can see what kind of equipment we have there. Uh, but let's go back to the, to the map, commercial, uh, commercial time over. And let's see the last one is the public works by the, by the utility companies in our city. Lots of works being done by the utility companies. Let's go to the downtown area. Lots of things being done in the downtown area. With this tool, we can see exactly the site where the work will be done or is being done and how it's going to affect the area. So let's zoom in in a particular site of, uh, of uh, work that will be done. This is right in front of the state assembly where the governor will, uh, will get his seat uh, on the 1st of uh, January in front of the former headquarters of the Brazilian Olympic Committee, a very familiar site for us, President Guzman. And there you see the, uh, the site where the construction will be happening and this helps us to plan what kind of traffic support we need if we, for instance, block one way over there. So let's zoom out. Uh, and uh, this concludes this segment of the demo. And now I'd like to show you something that we'll achieve in the future. I, as you saw in the video, uh, we are aiming to have, in the end of the first semester, this uh, new high-resolution uh, meteorology forecast tool in our city that's being developed by IBM. IBM has a uh, uh, over 70 people working in the system, which is, which is tailor-made by the city of Rio, and uh, they did some simulation. We are still in the, first, in the early stages, and the simulation that we've done, we got the meteorological data from the big storms that we had in Rio this year in April, and we simulate how we would see it if we had the tool at that time. So let's play the video. You see the map of Rio, you see the storm forming. In the right hand side you can see that red is very heavy rain and then you have the scale and you can see how the storm is being formated. In the bottom, in the left hand side, you see the date and the time of the day that with the evolution of the storm. And you can see that everything is getting, is becoming red very fast and it was really a severe storm. And this is one of the capabilities of the system that is still I would like to remind you on the development. Uh, another possibility for us to see the storm would be the flow of winds and, uh, and how the clouds are operating during that time. So you have all the, the flow of the winds and, and how the storm moved past by the city. And that with that we could make a countdown on where uh, the, the event of rain would happen at a certain moment in time. So this is something that we'll get in the future, but we are very excited about it because it will allow us to uh, prevent, to allow us to act beforehand, and that's what the Smart City does. Uh, now I'd like to ask our operators to put up the screen uh, on a day-by-day -day operation mode so that we can see uh, how the room would look like in a regular operational day. So in the center we have our traffic cameras. Uh, uh, we have a group of them we can select anyone and put up in the big screens and there you go uh, uh, let form the screen so that I'd like to point out one or two segments for you and then I would conclude my, that this is part of this presentation. Uh, very important that this all real time, this is actual what's happening on the city right now. We had an incident this morning that the center were, were, was able to operate. Was a, we had a fire uh, under, a tub, un, under a bridge here in Rio and from the center we were able to get the information fast and act. So, uh, from uh, the left hand side to the right hand side, just some information that we'll have first. Uh, we'll have some, whatever complaints the citizens are making, we know here 
uh, what's happening, and then we have the power grid, we have the quality of the air, we have our big map that we can play with. Here, we have the subway cameras, we have the train cameras, we have uh, cameras from the, uh, the, high, the yellow lines, the highway. Up here is the radar. I'd like to point out uh, the radar because uh, the city bought the radar and it was installed some two weeks ago. And we see that no rain in the city right now, which is good. Uh, we have a little bit of things up there where going towards the mountains, but so far so good, no rain in Rio right now. And uh, here, uh, let me point you to that screen over there. You see Copacabana Beach, you see people walking on the street. This is live, this is a live transmission from Copacabana right now. This is a, still a pilot project, Mayor, but we'll have the capability to send a car to whatever site that we have, and we can control the camera right here. So we can ask the operator to turn the camera to the left-hand side to see the other, uh, to the other side. Please, let's turn the camera to the left. Left, please. Okay, there is the hand. And the camera will turn to the left so that we can zoom in, we can see whatever it is. Uh, this uh, mayor, this, uh, he reported some incidents in the morning. He found some trash. It's my fault, sorry. <laughs> in Copacabana Beach. Let's see the incident, please. Let's show, let's show to the mayor. Uh, of course, it's already collected because we reported it previously. We acted very fast, Mr. Mayor. So, this is an incident in Copacabana. I mean, this is not trash. This is, I think, uh, uh, this is a uh, kasamba. I don't know how to translate this into English. This is a construction, whatever. Where is the kasamba? I don't know where the kasamba is, but I saw a kasamba earlier. Oh, is Tadia the kasamba? Yes. It's, it's in green there. It's a, in the legal uh, location. We have to take it up before the New Year's Eve. So with with uh, with this with this tool we can pre-record incidents. We can show here, and we have a live camera. When you go out, Mr. President, you see that car in front of you. I'm instructing to to come back. You can see the route, and it will be parked in front of us when you leave the building. So uh, these are some features of the building. Now I'd like to uh, invite the mayor to make his address, and once again I'd like to. Thank the mayor for this opportunity and to tell you, Mr. President, President Rock, uh, that uh, this building, this operation center, I think is a small example on how here in Rio we are not shy in promises, but we do deliver. Thank you very much.